All right, everyone. Theme number two. All right. Lemons added to milk will make sour cream. Well, there you go, Marianne. Yeah. yeah. Lemon curls make them. Yeah. There. Yeah. There you yeah. go. All right. A chink in the armor. I'm not sure what gets kinked, Patty said. Oh my goodness, we're gonna have to we're gonna a have to research. The armor. We're gonna have yes. to do some research. I'm gonna have to change my whole <laughs> vocabulary. What does Sydney always say? Words are hard. Words are hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. Becky Hills in Myrtle Beach. Oh, I know, I'm so jealous. Oh, you must be on vacation, my friend. Lucky you. I okay. am totally jealous. All right. Definitely a chink. I'm, I'm going to have to I'm learn. saying if you had to wear armor and you couldn't bend, you'd get a I'd have a too. Kink too. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. There you go. All right. Um, <laughs> Kathy Knapp, you said, shoot, I missed number one and could use a good laugh today. Kathy, watch. go it. back and watch. There's some good ones. There are some good ones for sure. And I'm so sorry you're having a bad day. I hope it gets yes. better. All right, guys. So, Alicion. <laughs> Alicion, tell us what is our theme this week? It's all about relaxing sewing projects. And you can say it two ways. <laughs> relaxing sewing projects, relaxing sewing projects, or relaxing <laughs> sewing projects. It's not relaxing sewing projects on Myrtle Beach. It might be. <laughs> Pretend you're at Myrtle Beach, right? Oh, Sherry Carroll. Oh boy. I'm not even I'm not even afraid of the bloopers anymore. I lived through last year. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so that that is what Allison gave us as our theme. She said you're gonna come up with relaxing sewing projects. So what I decided today was that one of the most relaxing things for me, well, there's two, and they're total opposites. Machine embroidery. Oh yes. And hand stitching. They're both equally relaxing to me. So today I'm going to talk about machine embroidery applique. And even if you don't have an embroidery machine, I want you to hold tight and watch because it might impress you with what uh, we're going to do. And tomorrow I'm going to be talking about hand stitching your binding. Doesn't that sound exciting? Well, I'll make it exciting. I, I had a, I had Jackie and I are Wednesday. And we had a completely different about? take. We're doing weighted eye <laughs> compresses. Oh. <laughs> okay, so that's what you're relaxing. Yes. Well, no matter how you put it out there, we've got you covered. So, yeah, you guys know binding. Did I say binding? Did I you say said binding? binding? I said binding. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, Mary Crowther says it's her favorite hand stitching binding. Mine too. I, I like it too. I love it. So we're going to talk. Good movie on. We're going to talk about enjoying it tomorrow. But today we're talking machine embroidery. Okay. Oh look, Diane has questions too. Tomorrow, tomorrow, Diane, make oh, sure you get good. Good, good, good. And we're going to do this little applique together. Now, those of you who were in the mystery pizza box, you're going to recognize this applique, right? And now I put it so on cute. a tea towel because I think that's so much fun. In fact, why don't we, while I get um, this set up, let's show them for those who missed um, the mystery box pizza, mystery box, here it is, all unveiled, all finished. all finished. This has been sitting around and we have been fighting over who should have it. It's a Tuffet pillow. Yes, it's so cute. So that's what we did. There we go. And so with this... We did, um, we put together the, the dough and we put together the toppings and then we put it in the oven, quote unquote, the oven and let it rise. Right. Right. So if you were with me during that process, um, then you've seen these step outs, but if not, here's something new and Relaxing. it's a good review, right? Yes. And maybe you'll learn something new. So today I want to talk about machine embroidery. And so I am using a five by seven hoop for this. And I'm using a sheet of sticky back tearaway. 
Sticky Whenever back tear away. I love sticky back tear away. And I love them in the pre-cut sheets as well. So I'm going to show you my one of my favorite tips for whether you're doing this project or any other project that uses a sticky back stabilizer is how I actually hoop the sticky back stabilizer. So when would you use sticky back stabilizer? Um, I would probably use it if I was working with a lot of different pieces that I didn't want to move. Okay. Or I would use it when I was working with a fabric that has a larger... Um, What's that called? Thread, not thread, thre weave. Oh, larger really? weave. Oh, that's interesting. So that it didn't shift around. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That's a good way to look at it. Um, this oftentimes what people will do is they will do what's called floating a project where they put the project on top mm -hmm. instead of in the hoop. So yes, like Betty Jo said, use it for knits because when you put something in the hoop, sometimes what it creates is hoop burn, right? right. Or for difficult times uh, that it's hard for something to be hooped. All right. right, so let's talk about what is my trick for sticky back. Okay, so for those of you familiar with sticky back, it's got a shiny side and a paper side. And normally in the hoop, what would happen is we put this down shiny side up, we place this inside and it has sometimes a tendency to shift around. So that's why it can be kind of a pain. And then you score it and then you rip it off. But another technique that I like to do is I actually, should we close that door? Let's yes. go ahead and close it. That's I feel cute. like we have that close. wind. I know. I'm going to pull this back. Let me put my hoop back into place. Okay. All right. So my hoop is this one. I'm going to pull this back, revealing the sticky side. And if I just put it like this and stick it on, then I pull this back oops, like that. Ta -da! And there we go. I'm not actually hooping it itself. I'm going to do a little trim trim here. Okay. And then I bring these up and around. So there you go. I, genius. I hope that was worth the price of admission today, guys. All right. So there's my sticky back. Super easy, fast, simple. There you go, right? You don't have to hoop it. Okay. So I'm going to take, I'm using today the Kimberbell tea towels. And I'm with Heidi. They're so cute. The tea towels? Yes. I know. I love them. Love them. And I'm also going to, I printed out my template for this because I want to show you a little trick right here. Um, first of all, in your software, um, you're usually able to just print out the templates. All right. A lot of times a template will come with a download as well, which it has the crosshairs this way. The most important ones are the vertical, horizontal, and then the center. So this is really nice for if you're going to embroider on something, let's pretend for a moment that I wanted to actually have it at an angle. Isn't this so much easier to see when I have it pictured yes, like yes. that? And I put my little dot there. I'm going to grab my blue marking pin here. This would also be another really good reason why to have it um, on top of the hoop because then I can actually place that easier too. But let's pretend, I'm not going to do that for this one, but I'm going to show you. I'm going to put a hole in the or hole. I'm going to put a dot through the hole right there and I'll just quickly mark where my crosshairs are. Okay, then that way, when I put it into the hoop, on top of the hoop, I can line up my crosshairs, my, my center, and everything, every which way, I know where it's going. Another thing you could do is you could pin this in place, put it on your hoop, move it over to the embroidery machine, make sure the needle is over the center point, and then, guess what? Just pull it out and begin stitching. Now I'm going to show you a third way, and that is I'm actually going to mark my stabilizer, the crosshairs, right in the middle, just like this. Have you ever done it this way? No. All right. So I have some crosshairs there, 
and then I'm going to find the center of my towel simply by just folding it in half. Now this I have done. And you know what? Actually, I think I'll fold it in half the other way. It's going to be even easier. I'm going to put it with right sides together. Okay. And I can do a little mark right here. And then I could decide how far up I want that to be. And I can even take this to help me out with that. And I think I want it, yeah, no, I think I want it a little bit lower. So I can do this and mark my crosshairs this way. All right, you see what happened there? Now I'll take this, I have crosshairs here. Put this line on the vertical line and make sure the horizontal line is marked up, marked together with the horizontal line. Mm -hmm. And then all your marks are on the back. All my marks are on the back. There you go. And now I know that it's hooped exactly where I want this to go. Sweet. All right. All right. So that's how you mark. Okay, and then I just press it down. If you get it on and you're like, oh, I want to switch it around, no big deal. Look, it just comes off really easily, but it's going to hold this in place really, really nice. All right, let's take it over to the embroidery machine then and go through the steps of what's happening. Okay. Good. Mm-hmm. All right, so if you're not familiar with how machine embroidery works, there are basically three parts to an applique. You have a placement line, a tack down stitch, and a satin stitch. So let's show, oh, let me show one other thing here. There we go. Okay, right here, I don't know how it? well you can see that. Yeah, that's going to show me what's going to first stitch out. And here's the design that I'm stitching out. So I'm going to go ahead, put my presser foot down. And now let's watch it stitch. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take out the white thread so you can see this a little bit easier. I'm going to change it out. Oh, okay. All right. Let me change it out for red. That will be easier to see white thread on this you're probably not going to be able to see very well right and you could probably just layer it on that and then we'll make sure and move that camera real quick there we go okay all righty so i'm gonna go ahead and stitch that out These are my leaves. That it's done a placement line showing me where to put my leaves. Now take a look at this. All I have to do is take a big piece of fabric right here and I'm simply going to just make sure that it's covering everything and put my presser foot down and begin. So it's, again, this is just going directly over top of what my original line was. This is called the tack down stitch.
Isn't it fascinating? I just love watching it. You know, Allie was in here watching and she's like, no, I 112% need one of these. <laughs> exactly. All right, let's go ahead and take the computer back over. And I'm going to come right here and show you how I cut this. Oops. All right. Okay, and I'm going to grab the Kimberbell scissors that I love so much and just trim around the outside. Okay, so these are called duckbill scissors. They have, it's kind of a funny looking thing, but they have what's called a duckbill. And the whole idea behind duckbill scissors is that you put the actual duckbill towards the applique and it's supposed to protect your um, stitches from being cut. Now, you will notice that sometimes I go back and forth. I usually do just what's ever is most comfortable and you just have to hold this up and just do your trim trim. Okay. Oops. All right. Now, I promise I'm not going to take the whole time today to go through every step, but I want to at least get through a few of the steps together okay so you can see right here that the tack down stitch has been done and it's totally fine that i used a different color because um, i'm going to now change my color to green and that's what's going to stitch over top of it as the satin stitch all right so i'm going to come back over here oh allison is going to change that out for me and i'll answer questions while she's doing that uh, Kathy asked, could you have used sticky back wash away instead? Yes. Yep, you certainly could have. All right. Debbie is asking, do you pre-start your fabric before stitching down to prevent fraying? You know, Debbie, I don't. Um, and the reason for that is because I just get up nice and close with my cutting. And then the satin stitches will cover over top of the frame. So that's what I usually do. Okay, go ahead and put that in there for us. And then I will keep answering a few questions and then we'll go take a look at what's happening at the machine. Um, let's see. Uh, Lynn is asking if I use um, SF101 on the back of the fabric. I don't, not on this one. I will only, I usually use either SF101, go ahead and start, yeah. I use um, SF101 or Kimberbell Fusible Backing, which I really love that product as well. And I will use it on something if I think it's gonna see, you know, be seen through, if the background is gonna see through it. Um, that's when I'll use it, or I will use it on the back of like a quilt block. But as far as applique goes, I usually don't use it on the back of applique. All right, Debbie asked, do I use a special needle when using the sticky back stabilizers? Um, usually I'll just keep the same needle that I'm using. However, Debbie, that's a really good question. If you have problems with the sticky back that is coming up onto the needle, you have thread breakage for some reason because of that friction that's causing and it's getting sticky, then yes, you could use what's called like a, a Teflon needle or an anti-glue needle. Uh, there's different names for them, but it's kind of an, um, it helps resolve that issue. You could use a little bit of, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, sewer's Aid is another item that I like that I will put. It's a little liquid and the Sewer's Aid you can put on the needle itself and it just swipe it up and down and that will remove the sticky really well as, as well. All right, let's take a look at what's happening at the machine right now. You can see that it's going over the stitching. And isn't that amazing? I mean, I know for those of you who have embroidery machines, you're like, yeah, I've seen this before. But I bet if you have never seen this, 
um, this is going to just wow you, right? The fact that the machine knows exactly where to go. So let's watch that for a minute and then we'll answer some more questions. There's the first part of it, and then it's going to move over and go to the second part. Now it didn't go; to, it did not go to the bottom of it because that is where the planter is going to be covering it. So it didn't need to put it on there, right? Yeah. All right. So while that's stitching out, um, let's answer some more questions. Yeah, Donna, the reason why you're getting charged on some of your purchases tax, guess what? It's really a bummer. I hate it. I hate taxes. Um, but it's because, unfortunately, some states we now have to charge taxes because we do a certain, we've reached a, a threshold of business in that state. And so, unfortunately, your states want the money, right? Yeah. Which is understandable. Right. So, right. Nothing bad about that. I mean, we I hate, hate to it, send it yeah. but we it's something we um, that is done through um, the states. That That is why some states require us to charge sales tax, unfortunately. Um, Sharon says she's never seen how an embroidery machine works. I've thought of getting one. Sharon, it's so you need fun. One. Yes, it is fun. It is so fun. You didn't have one until... No. Until tug, until tug, and yeah, then he said, "Oh my gosh, after, I yeah. have to, I have to have one of these, right?" Yep. Yeah, for sure. It is a lot of fun, and it's just it's so rewarding to see how it comes together. So, we showed you this one that I did. I did a, a test stitch out on some just regular fabric here. So cute. And I, isn't that just the cutest thing ever? I just love it. So that is all done on an embroidery machine. And there's just no way you could get that look on a sewing machine. Right? Right. No. I mean, or by hand even. Yeah. Do we have pizza boxes left? Yeah, I think, asking. We, I think, I think we, we do a have a few. So no. yeah, I don't now know. because are they on the website many. or in the comments? Yes. Nope, they're, they're on, on the, the regular web. website? Yep. Okay. Donna? You heard it right here. She says we've got a few left. So, yep. All right. Oh, I understand. Sharon says she's retired, but she can't spend money. Understandable. If you can save money or find a good deal somewhere, or you don't have to have like a top of the line machine either. Okay, we're just, we're doing the um, tack down for the pot. Tell Jennifer, I am embroidering on my machine, and I love it, love it, love it, love it. Oh, go ahead. You tell her. Jennifer, I am embroidering on my machine. In fact, <laughs> I can't sit down, but I can embroider on my machine. Um, in fact, I just finished the Hoppy Spring mm -hmm. pillow, you and did? I got spring showers out last night. Nice. Yes. Oh, my gosh. How fun. All right. Let's take a look at what's happening at the machine. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but this stitched out a placement outline for the pot. I'm going to take this cute striped fabric and put that right there. And now put my presser foot down and begin to stitch. This is now doing the tack down stitch. going to go over a couple times. I love it when it goes over a couple times because that what that does is it allows me to pull up on that fabric without popping the stitches. Right. Jerry, hang tight. We'll tell you how to get the design. <laughs> we will. All, All right. right. Here we go. Do you want to cut it? Yeah. All righty. I'll change your thread. 
Oh, it, it doesn't need. Well, yes, go ahead and do the red. It's going to do the top of my pot next, but then the next satin stitch will be red, so I'm good. Okay. What do you guys think? So far, so good? You liking that? Now it's going to do the placement outline for my rim, and I'll find a cute fabric for that. Let's go ahead and put that in the machine. And we'll go from there. Okay. Oh, let's see. Cindy says she has two machines running right now. Wow, Cindy, that you must be doing a lot of embroidery. A lot amazing. of embroidery. That's awesome. And you notice that oftentimes we can just leave the machine. It's like the crock pot. Set it and forget it. Although sometimes I really love to be close by to watch <laughs> because it's almost like it's so mesmerizing. But look at that. I mean, we're, we're putting the stitch going. We're letting it do its thing. And we're not right next to it babysitting it. Okay. Yes, Curtis, I did receive your email. You got the right email, my friend. Yes, 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 yes. Go ahead and let's choose, um, let's choose any one of those. What should I have as the rim? You go ahead and choose, Allison. You're gonna do gray? Perfect. All right. So, yeah, it's true. Jerry says sometimes the minute you walk away, something happens, which unfortunately, yeah, you're right. Sometimes that happens. It doesn't want to be left on its own, <laughs> but it is nice. If I know that I have nothing to really get in its way, I'm golden. That's why I find it so relaxing is because I can like, you know, just sit at the machine. I can do my nails, <laughs> whatever it might be, right? All right. So this is coming out and it's going to, I'm going to cut, trim the outline. Okay. So this is what it looks like. And now I'm just going to trim out of it. All right. Let's take a look. Okay. The next thing that it's going to do is do the satin stitch for the pot. All right. So I'm going to do that in red. And... So you can see how it's looking. What do you think? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. All right, Allison, do your magic. All right. So what other questions can I help answer? Um, yeah, that's true. Curtis, you're right. He says, um, I'm usually pressing, prepping other blocks on the project while one is stitching, which is, yeah, really, really true for sure. All right. Um, Anyway, very, very fun. All right, you guys. So that is the basics of how this stitches out. Isn't that cool? And I love these, these uh, new tea towels from Kimberbell. So someone asked, what fabric did I use? I used a charm pack from Beautiful Day. In fact, can we grab those, Allison? Um, this was our charm pack uh, for charm pack day. I think we might have a few left. Do we? Uh, I don't know. But, um, but there's some beautiful fabrics in here. And these are actually also the same fabrics I used on the Pizza Box Mystery Tuffet. So kind of fun. Um, ooh, look how pretty that is. Love that. Charm pack of the day. But yes, it was so our charm Sydney's pack checking. of the day. Sydney's checking to see if we have any left. Love this. Very, very fun. This was a favorite of a lot of people. I put that in people's kits. Aren't those gorgeous? <laughs> All right. So come on over, Allison. We're going to let that keep stitching out for a minute and just wanted to show you that. Now, for those of you who do not have a sewing machine, look, we have this for you. 